く Hello <laughs> and welcome back to I Love You Colonel Sanders Chicken Dating Simulator game. Let's find out what happens at this fucking cooking competition. Oh no, wait. Can you? I still want to fist fight whoever made that chicken look so goddamn good. You step into the massive crust. Lipstick and my Valentino white bag. Oh. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take each will take place. Reading, I can read. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show up our stuff. Yes, about goddamn time. Wait a second. Oh no. We have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not gonna blow anything except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans. You're gonna earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Why are we creating tiny food? I thought this was chicken school. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson... God, I'm still trying to figure out what his voice should be. For today's... We're just gonna fucking... For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and power off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on the Colonel Sanders. Why do I say the Colonel Sanders? Well, he is the Colonel Sanders. So, that. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two? That is, me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Sure, Sky, that I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing alone. Two different students quickly take notice. <gasps> oh, please do, pl Miriam, please be partners with the fucking cooking applot, the fucking robot. I forget his name. Clank! Be oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Can I pick for her? It looks like you'll have to pick for her! <gasps> oh, of course I'm gonna pick the fucking machine! I'm not... Honestly... After... What... After how she acted the first time meeting Pops, I don't know that I really trust her around children. Um, but I'm so excited! Oh, of course Clank! Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will par be partnering with Clank today. You can, you can, pop. It's okay, I already ate. You can, um, you can be, pops, you can be, my brain's not working. You can be partners with that fucking, um, shy character. Me, my character, my character in this game. It is me and you can't tell me it's not otherwise. Um, it's not entirely clear if pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Like this. Work, 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 work. Uh, hold on there. F hold on there, fella. We don't even know what the assignment is yet. Technically, Clank might not even have a face, but there's something charming about... Charming and earnest about him. I love his little face. What do you mean? Bzz. Tissue? I hardly know you. <laughs> um, Plank judders and a panel shakes loose? You get the impression that this is a sign of affection, okay? Looks like you two will be fine. Hell yeah! Honestly, I'd, I'd honestly have to say I might give up the kernel for Clank. Um, now it's time for you to focus on your own cooking classwork. Hell yeah! 
All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're gonna keep it simple. Oh, ooh. Uh, excuse. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest your partner, Colonel Sanders? Ooh, steak tartare. It seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Ah, uh, what do you mean? What? What do you mean you don't need to cook it? I'm pretty sure you need to cook steak. If I'm not mistaken. Using octopus will blow your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Now listen. Listen, you make the chicken, I'll make the mashed potatoes. Um... Will using octopus really blow him away, though? Will it really? Listen, I really have to think about this because I already kind of fucked things up with the colonel when I followed him outside to tell him what that I think habanero peppers would taste good with his chicken, like habanero peppers. It, it was my choice. To be fair, it was my choice. But habanero peppers, that's not gonna make it taste better. I hate. <laughs> uh, um, God, this is a tough one. Um, this one concerns me. This one also concerns me. This one sounds delicious, but I feel like it's so fucking basic that I'll get kicked out of college. Octopus, potatoes, 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 octopus. Let's be bold. I mean, this was the first pick I chose. I fucking knew it! Mashed potatoes! Mashed potatoes go with chicken! Here's the chicken master, and I fucking chose octopus! Oh, don't blow him away! Suck my cock! Ah! My chicken. My chicken cock. I'm not gonna finish that sentence. I, I've always been... Something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. And great and, <coughs> and gravy. I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No. No. Po no. I keep... No. Channel the Southern. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. And, oh god, no. Looks like... Yeah, no, sure, we're gonna do it. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking, partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business, and you don't- and you'd better keep making- it- you'd better keep your fingers off my man. Did someone call for me? <coughs> uh, no- jeez, Van. Well, I'm over here crushing Sky's dreams. You're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. Oh, he peeled them! He tosses them into the boiling water and turns his attention onto you and your old friends. Oh, howdy, Ashley. Ram, ram. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? 
actually, no. It looked like Sky was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know what? You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was gonna say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy foods. Uh, maybe one day you might be able to get up up to my level. Ha, huh, no doubt. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders. Ability to concrete creation, concoct creations worthy and of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Bitch, who the fuck? Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows we fit together like thigh and a drumstick? It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear, she's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup before things get ugly. Miriam! Turn a clone's hunk of hunks in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, who always has your back. Um... Let me get Miriam. Miriam! You turn to Miriam as soon as you find her. She senses it and looks back. This girl's friend in need radar is one second of none. She immediately comes running over. Is somebody threatening? Was somebody threatening my friend? I will destroy them! I actually think that Ashley and Van Van were just leaving. Leaving you in the dust. Vis-a-vis -vis my skills as a chef, perhaps. But stepping away from this competition, you are sorely mistaken. Miriam, you're a loyal friend, but Sky is my partner for today's activity. You look over at Sprinkles and hope that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn, those cute cargies in their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Have they? So, as, as all of this shit's been going down, I've just been fucking cooking? And nobody said anything? I mean, like... Okay. Alright. I know just what to do. Colonel extends his hand, holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat. <laughs> Uh, out of which pours br smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. I need a moment. We all need a moment to bless this beautiful dish right here. Mashed potatoes and gravy, such fine dining. So so delectable. Sorry, I had to adjust in my chair to sit upright to see this beautiful... Okay. Okay. Colonel Sanders holds a, a spork out to you. Those goddamn sporks. You reach out and grab a hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all the madness and the pressure of the crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. Oh, <laughs> if you love something, set it free. For a second, I thought he was saying, I love you. <laughs> Together, you dig the utensils into the mashed potatoes and you lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. Is she? 
and then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling a sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid face? She wasn't even looking at me! She was looking at the colonel! Why am I being the aggressor here? Van Van, do something! Scooping a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on, wait. Hold on right there, Sky. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I throw it at the colonel's face? Can I have potato face? Van Van rushes back over. A covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braise tentacles of octopus in my silky saltwater sauce. Plate it on a back... A back saddle. A back saddle. A battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. That's just how I imagine. Like, cause he's always positioned like this, so I always that he imagine. I imagine that he talks like this, like just with his arms up. Um, you've ignored me. Oh wait, you've ignored me for too long. This ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will look on. You will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off his plate. No! Don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and it may have turned in the process. The result could be toxic! Too late, it has been eaten. Ah! Uh, I think I left something in the oven. <laughs> I don't feel so good. It killed him! Everyone step back! Don't take another bite! When you look back at the plate, the rest is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped and Pop's mouth pops no! Pop winces and pain just for a moment and then immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. Tastes taste like poison. Yeah, we'll do this voice for Pops. Um, the entire class has gathered to watch Pops' final moment. <laughs> Shock has frozen in the whole crowd. They are motionless statues. Ah, that brings me to the time when I, when people gather around me to watch me die. Long story short, my friends threw a funeral for me in middle school and they gathered around my body as I was on the ground outside. Those were good times. And I wonder why people thought I was weird. Anyways, the class bell rings disrupt dis disrupting, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back into reality, it would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new sp things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kind. Alright, my neck cracked when I fucking did that. Um, I'm not sure- I'm not sure pro the professors here make enough money. Um... Hello? I just turned into a ghost over here! Seeing that you're shaken out by the really annoying student, 
and all of his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. Hi, Colonel. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. Oh, that wasn't for me? Fuck! What? Like, for real? Oh, come on! You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, he was talking to me. Okay. <laughs> it's stupid. At night, the school building has taken an on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. <sighs> Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me of why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him that you're developing feelings for him. Um, I don't think so. Uh, Colonel Sanders? Yes, guy. There's something that I need to tell you. Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world has ever seen. And every day, I have been working toward that dream. Day and night. Wait, day in and it took the day and night, never stopping. Never resting, also lifting tons of weights. Like, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our, all our hearts. That our souls may grant, may, our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, you, I, shut up. I'm the only one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove, you can't prove that. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear long <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. That was just so funny to me because <laughs> you know that means that he heard it and he's just, he's so done. And I just, I think, hello? I just, I think that's amazing. Um, I didn't read what he said, but that's fine. The spork monster! The spork monster! The spork monster is here to fight a hero! Uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds! How dare you threaten me as I was just, just as I was letting my guard down and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid. <clears throat> Be afraid. Be very afraid of me. Because I'm a monster, see? Is he, he is he's rhyme is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? Before you discuss any syntax any further, it turns bait. Uh, it's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? Um, attack. I guess you go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. 
one damage. It just got real! The attack really upset the Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. Is this my creation? Is this my creation that has come to life because I threw it at Ashley's face? You take one damage. D d defend? You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay. Okay. Well, I don't know! Force to mash mine draws energy from Mother Earth itself. How will you respond? Attack? You decide to go on the attack. Cook with love! Is no quitter buffed up and ready to rumble? They go and attack once again! Two damage! If you take much more damage, you're not gonna survive the battle attack! Why is this the only thing I know? Losing cheese sauce onto the lawn on the quad. I wonder who's gonna have to clean this up. Get the dog to clean it up. He'll eat anything off the floor. Feeling vulnerable, Spoke Monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Colonel! Vile villain. Your reign of terror stops here. Yeah, I was waiting on him to join in because, like, I'm doing all of the work right now, Colonel. Colonel su summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Ah! Oh. Pot pop power pinch. Does 10 damage. Spork monster is defeated. You saved me. An injured spork monster spears, spews steam into the night. Finish him! Finish him! No student will ever walk in the quad in fear again. The monster messed with the wrong chef. Attack! You're ready for your final attack. You'll never survive my student loan debt destruction! Does 10 damage. Spork monsters completely vaporized. Colonel Sander looks in awe. You continue you continue to surprise me, Sky. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection it's so much more. It's the book of magic spells with the golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to si have it signed out is Borco. Hmm. Borco? That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. So I just completely faint. Pussy! Um, the image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. The Colonel. He must have helped you get home in your tired state. You don't know if the guy could. You, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy! You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single single word. You feel that your covers being pulled over you as you're tucked in tightly. Good night, my Colonel. In your dreams, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Dreams are weird. You know what I dreamed about last night? I dreamed that I was in high school again. But what's weird is every time- I'm 23 years old. Every time I have a dream that I'm in high school, 
for some reason, I get sent back to high school, being the age that I am, and the zombie apocalypse started. And then we were just trying to escape, and then the government was trying to kill us, because, you know, we're disposable, so instead of trying to, like, help us out, even though we're not bitten or infected, we've been around the infection, so they're trying to wipe us out, because we were exposed to it. And so we don't tell humanity because they're trying to cover it up. But anyways, that was what m happened in my dream last night. Leave a comment down in the below. What's, what's the weirdest dream you've ever had? Anyways, you wake up on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had, whether the memories or premonitions. You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used cock! <laughs> and, um, there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably best that, it's probably j best just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. And I'm gonna continue this episode in... 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 In the next video. See ya!